drama from DiCaprio. And we're starting off with a very depressing, maybe not depressing, but very sad and tragic movie, What's Eating at Gilbert Grape. It's mostly about Johnny Depp, but DiCaprio plays a mentally disabled kid. And so throughout the movie, you kind of just feel bad for him and his whole family. The mother is obese after their father committed suicide. And so now they're in this town about to die, essentially. And no one's really around buying stuff. Everyone's kind of miserable, including Johnny Depp. They're in a dying town and it looks like this family slowly but surely it's dying as well and so DiCaprio despite turning like 18 I think he still functions like a four-year-old a five-year-old and then Depp has to you know take care of him he has to be responsible for him but also responsible for the money as well he has to work at this supermarket which again has no one else except for him and this other person working and so with all of these responsibilities and all of the stress having to take care for their mom because she hasn't been out since like seven years it would put a lot on a person and so just like with the town Johnny Depp is slowly dying on the inside he's just barely keeping things together keeping his family in check living on this farmland he even has an affair with his older lady which at first you know very you know like i know you know very consensual later on it's like she's preying on him she's a predator because he rejects her she doesn't like her husband she doesn't really care about her own two kids which one of them dies and it's like wait a minute did the father kill him or maybe she did to like frame johnny depp very predatory against you know johnny depp which is creepy in that supermarket scene there's this one character named becky which johnny depp sees as a beacon of hope as someone who can just give him life essentially because he doesn't want to be in this town he wants to take care of his family but also he's getting tired of it talking to this girl named becky they get along well by the end she comes back in order to take dicaprio and depp off road and out from this town and then the mom depp finally gets to talk to her in her final moments i think before she dies on the bed where she's you know ashamed doesn't want herself and her whole family to feel like a joke and that's what they've kind of been essentially and so it's a very heartfelt very sad tragic end instead of getting her out which would take like a machine or whatever they decide to burn the house down burn her on the inside because they don't want anyone else knowing this knowing that she's a joke this whole family's a joke this is a very personal thing which i thought was weird you know can't really get her out of her bed but i don't know they burn the whole house down in a way can move on all of his family they're probably successful him and dicaprio go on his journey with Peggy so that they can move on and get out from this dying town because they don't want to die with it just like their mother did so while this film was a bit depressing sad and tragic it's still a good movie this boy's life i don't know if i like this i mean i do like this movie but a movie about if you don't like where you're at in life just you know you gotta get up and just leave which is not easy you know it's not like you can just get up and walk away from your whole situation but this whole movie is on about like you're in a very bad area dicaprio's a young boy hanging out with the wrong crowd doing very bad things his mother keeps choosing like these awful awful dudes who are nice at first and then eventually learn that they abuse them and like drinking a lot and so i felt that the movie could have been like a short film because that's kind of the whole point of you're in a bad situation just get up and leave move on but then there's also like you know what if you're not financially good what if you can't do it because i don't know you're not stable enough or you're just committed to whatever you're committed to and that's it but you should probably leave if you're not happy de niro's playing this father or not father but this guy that his mother meets very nice a drunk likes abusing her and she can't say anything because she's scared doesn't want to leave him because she feels bad feels that it is her fault if she leaves or she feels responsible to him which she isn't at all she can just get up and leave leave the capper has to come in and fight him you know throw bottles or whatnot pans and pots of whatnot yell at him and then finally both him and his mother run out literally and get out de niro's trying to you know plead, hey stay 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 it's like nah man you gotta go you gotta move on he tried fighting dicaprio and it's like it didn't work out and then in the end there's like this text where dicaprio's walking and it says that he died in 1992 i think and this is based on like a true event real life quote unquote mother goes away she's happily remarried the movie ends on a very good and happy note where both both him and his mother are free, happy, and their future looks bright and it's great. Total Eclipse. I don't really care about this movie at all, really. It's about poetry or something. DiCaprio's playing this poetry, young poetry boy. And then along his journey, he's on a train. There's butt stuff. Like, there's a moment where he's getting tied up and something goes up his butt. I don't know what it is, but it was awful and gross. Don't know why they did that. I think he did something wrong to someone. Very important. Another poetry person, I think. Something like that, probably. And then there's a lot of hand pokes and stabs to the hand. Maybe that was a big thing in 
in this time period which is like 13 14th century i forgot clearly i'm just not interested because i had no idea what this movie was about i just looked up the name on google where it can be found on streaming services and then i don't read summary or whatsoever i just go in blind and once the first 20 minutes went by it was like okay this movie's about poetry and shit and like the very early old days just not for me the one thing i will say capro feels like he's in another movie overconfident very uh arrogant in a way but then in the end it gets him in trouble i don't remember how this movie even ends if i'm being honest i watched it checked that out on my memory my notes were poetry but stuff did capro in a different movie can poke stabs that was my notes really i'm interested and invested in this movie it just wasn't for me Irvin's Room. I don't like this movie as much as the other ones on his list, but it still is a good movie. You got DiCaprio playing this very juvenile young boy. His mother is Meryl Street. Mainly the movie is about her and her sister and how she has leukemia and how her time is very much limited. So in a last attempt, despite not having a great relationship with her sister, she wants to get to know her own like nephew and whatnot because it's mainly about that this family, they haven't talked in like 20 years. DiCaprio doesn't even know that he has like an aunt. And so his scenes with her, at first it's very much awkward. She wants to like touch him and whatnot he just claps her hands away but eventually ride her own car they ride on the beach which i think is probably not legal riding your car on the beach especially near the waves where it can get stuck but that was a fun moment for her because her time is limited she wants to have fun and not spend her last days just arguing with her family because you don't really want that build this bond and just spend your time with them for the rest of your life on the other hand you have Mirror street who's like no she's pretty much selfish she's worked hard to get where she's at and doesn't want to sacrifice her own needs to just take care of her own sister and she's also not the fun like sister where her other sister's a lot more free and allows DiCaprio to you know have fun she's not she's very much strict wants certain things to happen works hard that's it no fun whatsoever and then also their father is dying as well due to old age and whatnot and so you have a father that's dying you have a sister that has leukemia and then you have Mary Street who doesn't really want to sacrifice what she works so hard for in order to take care of her sister she sees that as something that's not possible through talking talking and more talking just you know like human beings and whatnot they're able to forgive whatever happened 20 years ago being sister rivalry bullshit by the end mirror street decides to stay and take care of her sister until she eventually passes because i think she needs a bone marrow i think they need like blood for her in order to like get her back on her feet or you know what i'm not gonna say anything about that i don't know nothing about leukemia cancer doctor stuff i don't know any of that shit but the movie overall i liked it it's a very predictable but you know heartfelt movie as well celebrity so maybe this is just me but i feel like this movie would be a lot better if you were in the industry of you know entertainment hollywood all of these things that are happening would you know resonate with a lot more people that are within the industry it's essentially just a look behind the scenes about what it takes to be popular and what's life like if you know you're a celebrity essentially and i've never been one to care about celebrities really i mean there are some actors that i really like but do i care about their every day to day stuff like no but this movie is also very informative in a very i guess fictional sense or maybe non-fictional because these things do happen i'm assuming it's a cool movie to look from the outside and just be like this is kind of cool dicaprio isn't really in much of the movie but for the amount that he's in he has an effect because he beats on this girl just wailing on her and then right after that they have to go out sign autographs cameras and pictures paparazzis and they have to put on this act of being like we're happy you know we're not totally not fighting earlier and they have to put on this act and pretend that they're happy and that could be draining having to be happy 24 7 all day every day keep up this look and image of you is just hard and not possible at all and then our main lead lee he's kind of us essentially wanting to get into the industry because he wants to divorce with his wife he's not happy with her he wants all the stardom and whatnot and so through his perspective he's going through all these different celebrities watching their life how they function eventually him and dicaprio have sex with these two other girls and it's like you know what maybe this ain't so bad but he's very reluctant at first being like this is a different type of world popular people live like this along the way he meets a model named Charlize theron that's not you know the character's name but i recognize that it was her seduces him try to get him to you know be with him essentially and he's not really about that just seeing that perspective from the outside and that modeling world there's even a jk simmons cameo he's like selling something off the street but it was cool seeing him because it's jk simmons he's great and then meanwhile you have the wife whose name is judy yeah it's judy turns out she's the one that becomes more successful than lee because lee wanted fame he wanted to be something be big right that led into him just being insecure having his own demons and just doing random shit judy was like you know what she's gonna take any opportunity that she gets but then not you know stab somebody in the back and so by the end she's more successful and he's pretty much miserable for wanting the fame wanting everything to go right wanting all of this by himself and being insecure and then yeah i think that's it that's the whole movie just about what it's like to be a celebrity 
The Beach is kind of a weird movie. It has a really wacky premise. DiCaprio's on vacation in Thailand and it just leads into this rabbit hole of like guns and mafia shit, other island bullshit, survivor lookalike. Tilda Swinton is in this movie. How is she in this movie? I have no idea, but she's in this movie because why not? So DiCaprio's on vacation. He likes going on vacation alone because he's weird like that. He gets a hotel room and he's got a crazy ass neighbor, kills himself, sees that there's a map about this island island having like treasure or something and it feels like a mix of uncharted national treasure if i were to see a dead body next to me or next door in my hotel and then i see like a map that says there's golden treasure on this abandoned island or something i'd be like fuck that i ain't going there goodbye after seeing all that after drinking snake blood because he got offered to drink snake blood and so he drank it it's weird really weird and of course in this type of movie and story there's a girl that he likes they give those looks he sure has a boyfriend he makes his move on her she likes it he likes it don't care about that once they get there there's like people with guns and bullets and there's this whole tribe and everything on this island and this movie's kind of crazy and then once they're again Tilda Swinton I think she's like the leader or something she looks like it because she's the only person I recognize and seems to have some sort of power but by this point I was kind of drained because it went from a typical like foreigner having a vacation and then finding this map going over there finding people with guns and then finding a tribe getting there seeing some weird shit and it's just like the escalation of like ridiculousness and crazy it went from zero to 100 real quick by that time i was like i'm checked out because it's kind of stupid by this point and so after all of that him the girl and a couple of people they survive somehow he's back home in the u.s and just seeing those early ass like windows 98 computer and 2000s computer was a real treat because they were like really big and fat why are they so big back in the day but anyways he gets an email from like the island or something or the beach to come back or something and then that's when the movie ends so this movie is just crazy the movie just escalates into a very normal vacation to just like i don't know massacre tribalism type shit something like that Don's Plum. This movie feels like a amateur slash student slash college film because well you have Tobey Maguire, Spider himself, Peter Parker in this movie and he's not good. He is so bad. DiCaprio feels like he's just playing improv. He's all right. And then Tara from Buffy, that actor, what's her name? Ember Minson or something. She's not good because there is a scene with her in a mirror and I know that she's a good actor because she's in Buffy. She's good in Buffy and so clearly her mirror scene is bad direction from the director because she's just looking at it giving her thoughts and monologue and whatnot and she's not the only one i think most of the characters in this diner for some reason they go in the mirror give their thoughts and monologue for like way longer than it should be and then we go back into the diner of the group and kids improving and whatnot being arrogant teens and whatnot being overconfident and that's kind of the whole movie like i feel like a big chunk of this movie like the big middle chunk is all of these damn teens in this diner and restaurant talking about nothing essentially they're just improving it feels like outtakes or some shit it's not good and then those mirror scenes are not good they're just not why are they there there's even one scene where a girl kicks a tire why it doesn't even look good why i don't know why it's such a long ass dinner scene it's like 40 minutes no joke and also it's on youtube i cannot find it on any streaming services so i had to google and turns out this movie wasn't supposed to be like a long movie it was supposed to be a short film about just teenagers messing around being arrogant essentially thinking they can do whatever they want and whatnot and so a lot of it feels like padding it's an hour 40 minutes why is it that long especially 40 minutes i swear no joke is in the diner just hanging out they're not doing anything really all that interesting really so just based on like directing and technical aspects and just acting this is not a good movie because i know dicaprio and toby and tara from buffy they're good actors the other actors i'm sure they're good as well but they just have like a very amateur filmmaker just mirror scenes of like monologues and inner thoughts just it's not a good movie and finally, J. Edgar. Now, I did not know who he was. And so after finishing the movie, I looked up who J. Edgar was. He was a very powerful person for over 50 years in the FBI with the Iron Fist and whatnot. And so this movie tells his story. I would say right off the bat, the old age makeup for DiCaprio does not look good. It always throws me off. I don't think I've seen good old age makeup from memory. Unless there is one that I'm just completely forgetting about. But old age makeup always are a bit weird. They look a bit off. J. Edgar Hoover. He's a very powerful person 
person but he's also very fragile in his ego and as a person because he cannot take any sort of minor or big criticisms at all whatsoever and each time he is he wants to go after or look after a person or something like that very aggressively like look after this person see what they do and whatnot we want to take them down it's like a very mob type of mentality where if you're not with us you're against us and we'll take you down that's kind of his character in his movie he also has buried emotions where he feels weird around girls and boys and turns out he's gay and so bury all of that because he thinks it's wrong it isn't right even though you should not bury that at all just embrace it and then once he gets caught out for it there's this guy his partner what's his name i forgot his name and then over time they have a bond friendship turns into something more serious and then he rejects it it's like no 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 this can't happen it's wrong and then also the working out thing for the police now on the one hand it makes sense in a way where if you're gonna be a part of the police force and chasing criminals and whatnot you can't be you know like overweight or whatever you gotta be fit you gotta be you know perfect for the job however when it comes to hoover himself it is a bit hypocritical of him not being fit he's not like you know overweight but we see him doing push-ups and whatnot and just barely able to do a couple and so him saying that is a bit like what is the reason it makes sense for chasing criminals but what is the real reason turns out he just really want to look at good looking fit men on the force essentially and then with them being unchecked and very powerful in the police force there's a lot of corrupted things going on behind the scenes he has all these files that are just you know don't look at corrupted whatever and so in the end when he gets like called out for his reasonings and his ways and whatnot president nixon i think at the time i think don't know my history that well in the end he dies and asks his assistant gandhi to destroy all those files because it's got classified and would get him in deep trouble along with other people as well and so in the end while hoover was a great person very powerful person to lead the fbi and keep people safe behind the scenes he was very much a fragile human being fragile ego didn't like any criticism buried his emotions and was pretty much unchecked and so he became sort of corrupt in the end as well but died cowardly in a way and again i don't know if this is true or not i'm assuming it is because a lot of these movies on here are like based on true events or real life quote unquote but the amount of truth that there is sometimes it's changed i feel like that's every movie that says based on real events like the outline of this movie is true but all the details maybe not so much but the film was all right and that was it for dicaprio's drama movies for the most part i like them dawn's plum which yikes i don't know but then you also have gilba grape which is something that's you know actually pretty good and so again a lot of like varied quality or not quality maybe but just what i prefer and like varies here but that's it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching